He is risen! Happy Easter, everyone. Great to see you today on this special Easter service. A special welcome to, to visitors yeah, and friends. Glad you could worship with us today. Pastor Michael here, Peace Free Lutheran Church, Canal Winchester, Ohio. It is truly a fantastic day. This is the day we celebrate our Lord rising from the dead. Our call to worship today comes from Mark chapter 16. Yeah, and this is what the call to worship says in verse 6. And the angel said to them, Do not be amazed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is a place where they have laid him. Let's continue in prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for paying for our sins with your death on that cross. We ask, God, that indeed you would be glorified in this worship service. We thank you that it's Easter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And friends, before I forget, and this is really a, a special announcement to, to the kids and teens if you're interested, and even adults if you, you feel that you're a kid at heart. We have some different things in, in the background, kids. I'm sure you're... You notice them, and we don't have an Easter egg hunt like we usually do, but there's some things in the background if you want to take a look at what's different this time. And if you find any, feel free to give me an email about that. Thank you.
At this time of our service, we have our confession of sin. We do recognize that even after a believer has received Christ's forgiveness, they still sin. The answer is, well, because we still have a sinful nature. We still have a sinful nature in this life that still craves to sin. It is something we have to live with. Both the scriptures say that when we sin, we can always come back to Jesus Christ. Our confession of sin for today is found in our bulletin, and if you don't have one readily available, that's okay. You can pray in your hearts along with us today. O most begotten, O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, Increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our declaration of grace for today comes from the psalmist, Psalm 103, verse 12, and it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far... Has God removed our transgression from us? Amen. Amen. On to our scripture lessons for today. Our Old Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. It says, The Lord of hosts will prepare a lavish banquet for all peoples on this mountain, a banquet of aged wine, choice pieces with marrow, and refined aged wine. And on this mountain he will swallow up a covering which is over all peoples, even the veil which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time, and the Lord God will wipe tears away from all faces. And he will remove a reproach of his people from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken, and it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God, whom we have waited, that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. So far this lesson. Our epistle reading for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12 through 21. And this is the Apostle Paul writing in verse 12. We are not again commending ourselves to you, but are giving you an occasion to be proud of us, that you will have an answer for those who take pride in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God, if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become for righteousness of God in Him. And finally, our Gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. 
It says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so they might come and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, Who will roll the stone for us from the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, although it was extremely large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting up right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed, for you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, here is a place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had gripped them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Here ends our scripture lessons for today. Our confession of faith is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of a body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. soon as I heard it. It just pulled the vehicle out of a, of a restaurant and as one of the tires was going around and around I heard a click, 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 pull over and I saw a nail that was sticking out at about a 45 degree angle of the nail head that is. 
out of a tire. I had a problem, and I had to do something about it right away, even if it was a quality tire that was on the vehicle. And on this Easter Sunday, in our text today, we'll be looking at Mary Magdalene, and she has a problem. She was going to the tomb today to honor the body of Jesus with spices, except the body is gone. What does she do? And really, what should we do as we think about the empty tomb? We get the answer in our text. We are in the last gospel in the New Testament. That is the gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John chapter 20. We'll be looking at the first 18 verses. Starting at verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb, while it was still dark, and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple went forth, and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter, and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. So Simon Peter also came, following him, and entered the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the face cloth which had been on his head, not lying in the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple, who had come to the tomb, then also entered, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples went away again, to their own homes. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping, and so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? So, opposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came, announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he has said these things to her. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for your word. We ask that indeed you would give us seeing eyes and hearing ears as you speak to us. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The problem, or really not a problem, but the empty tomb. What do you do? And really, what did Mary do? First, she got help. She got help. And sometimes when you need help, what do you do? You ask for help. Maybe you're in need of toilet paper, or you're in need of something. What do you do? Sometimes you call a family member, a friend, the church, whatever, and you ask for help. I need help. Please help me. And people can be great if they have resources available. They can be a great help. And Mary recognizes she needs help. The body is gone. Someone has taken the body away, and she doesn't know who. And she runs, and the first people she comes across that she knows are Peter 
and the disciple whom Jesus loved, that would be John. And she comes to them with a problem. The problem is the body of Jesus is gone. She makes it very clearly. They have taken away the Lord from the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. So we find Peter and John springing into action. In fact, they're running. Are they not? This is important. The body of their Savior, of their Lord, is gone. It's completely gone. They don't know where it's at. What do you do? Mary knows that she can't really go to the authorities because the authorities were the one who commissioned Jesus to be put to death as a criminal. She couldn't go to the religious leaders because they have also determined that Jesus was a criminal and he needed to die. So she goes to two disciples. She knows the first people she comes across. And she gets help. And for us today, as we consider the open tomb, we need to get help as well. And where do we go? We go to the scriptures. We go to what God has said in his word about Jesus rising again from the dead. We have these gospel accounts, four different accounts of the same event that say in different words, but it's the same thing, that Jesus rose from the dead after three days. God's word is here for you and me to help us, to help us know the truth that Jesus indeed rose from the dead so we can go to the scriptures for that help. So Mary got help and secondly take a close look at the evidence. Take a close look at the evidence. It seems every once in a while that when someone is put in jail or as we hear from the news reports that the evidence that someone was put in jail on was faulty or the investigators did not look at all the evidence or part of the evidence and it winds up that the person who was convicted has been set free and we certainly rejoice in the fact that the innocent are released and how tragic it is when evidence is not consulted or overlooked. And notice that Peter and John are doing something. They're going to look at the evidence. Is Mary off a rocker? They immediately realize that's not the case. That's not the case. They need to see for themselves. It says that they are running. There is a sense of urgency here. They are running. The other disciple, that would be John. John gets to the tomb first. And he stoops down and he looks in. And he sees the linen wrappings lying there. It has the idea that he bends down to look in. And he continues to look and look and look. Why is he doing that? Because he's astonished. He's surprised. And we're told about something else. The body of Jesus is gone, but the linen wrappings that covered his body are still there. It's surprising. In those days, a body was wrapped as soon as possible because of a climate. And what Mary was going to do was to anoint and really respect the body with extra spices and oils. And how interesting it is that the body is gone, but the linens are still there. Remember that Jesus' outer clothes, his one, ro one piece robe was taken off by the Roman soldiers because it was valuable. And now... The body is gone. The body is gone. And finally Peter comes. It tells us in verse 6. And he enters the tomb. He enters the tomb. And he touches. He sees it. He sees the linen wrappings that covered the body. And he sees something else. There's the linen 
cloth that covered the head of a dead body of Jesus. That's in a different spot. It says, verse 7, The face cloth which had been on his head, not lined with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by, himself, by itself. How unique. How unique. How very strange. And it speaks of a fact that if someone stole the body, the first thing that they had to do was unwrap the body, losing all the spices and oils that had already been anointed on it, taking off a face covering, and then taking the body away. That doesn't make sense. And how more strange that if they were going to do that, wouldn't they have just thrown the face cloth down if they were going to steal the body? But instead, it's wrapped neatly and it's put in a separate place. God is very intentional here. He is telling the disciples and he's telling us with this evidence that he is very, very deliberate. He is very deliberate on these things. The body wasn't stolen. God was raised from the dead. God was raised from the dead. And it speaks, his being raised from the dead speaks of what he has done for us. Dying on that cross, paying for all of our sins, and then rising again from the dead, proving that he has beaten death and the devil and our world that is committed to attacking and trying to destroy our Savior, but his rising again from the dead has proven that Jesus beat sin, death, and the devil and our world. And here it is, that evidence that Jesus is alive. His body is no longer there. And that evidence resounds with the disciples. John believes it says, He saw and he believed, and yet at the same time, verse 9, they didn't understand that Jesus had to raise from the dead. And in fact, it says the scriptures said that. The scriptures are very clear that Jesus had to rise from the dead. There's that evidence as well from God's word that Jesus had to do this. So Mary... She has the empty tomb. What has she done? She has got help. The help is taking a close look at the evidence. And finally, the call is to go to the source. Go to the source. If something is true or not, what do you do? You go to the source. And sometimes the press is very, very, as much as it's easy to bash them, being too far on the left or the right, really, what are they good at? They're good at going to the source and asking sometimes very difficult questions, but questions that need to be asked so we can hear whether something is true or not. And that can be very, very good. And here, it's so important to go to the source. Peter and John have investigated and to them there's nothing else to do so they go back to their own homes and life goes on and yet Mary Magdalene she is beside herself she has come back to the tomb and she is weeping what else can she do she's weeping outside the tomb and in her pain and her grief she stoops to look inside again. And when she does that, she sees two angels in white, verse 12 said, one at the head, the other at the foot, where the body of Jesus had been laying. We could say one where the linen wrappings was, the other where the head covering was. They ask her a question. Woman, why are you weeping? She gives a response. Because they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they have laid him. 
we might think that Mary would have come to her senses when she saw those two angels sitting in there talking to her, but it really speaks of her grief. She is beside herself. She doesn't understand. And sometimes in our grief and our pain, it doesn't matter what happens around us or right in front of us, literally, because we are in so much pain. We are in so much grief with anxiety, with fear, sadness, anger, whatever it may be. Sometimes that can happen to us. And here, the angels have come to her and she doesn't get it. She doesn't get it. She answers the question, and yet she doesn't understand. And then we are told that Jesus himself, verse 14, is standing there. She sees him, but she doesn't recognize him. Why? Because of her grief. He asks her the same question, she gives the same answer. She sees him, and it has the idea that she looks away. Because Jesus calls her name, and then she has to turn around. But again, she didn't even recognize Jesus. We talked about going to the source, how interesting it is that the source, Jesus, goes to Mary. Jesus goes to Mary. And then she recognizes him. Rabboni, and then Jesus talks about the importance of what happens next. Stop clinging to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go, tell my brethren, say to them, I send to my Father, your Father, to my God, and to your God. Jesus hasn't ascended to heaven yet, but he will. He is planning to reveal himself to the disciples, and he does later that same day. Jesus is indeed alive. And she recognizes that. She finally does. And praise God for that. And how interesting it is that Jesus seeks her out. Even after those two signs, the two angels, she misses it. Jesus himself, she misses it. And yet Jesus, in his grace, calls her name one more time, and then she realizes it. The source comes to Mary. And here also, God comes to you and me. We are told in Ephesians chapter 2 that in our sin, we are dead. We can't come to God in and of ourselves. It is an only an act of God that we hear his voice that we come to him, just like it is here in the passage, that Mary comes to Jesus after Jesus calls her to himself. And so it is with you and me. We don't come to Jesus in and of ourselves. We are dead in our sins. We have nothing to do with him. And yet it is only an act of God, God the Holy Spirit, who works in our hearts, that we recognize our sin and also our need for Jesus. God comes to us. God died on the cross to set us free from our sin because we needed that forgiveness and restoration. And praise God for that. God has been so good to us. He died on that cross, rose again, not because he had to, but because he wanted to, out of love. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I wanted to encourage you with that today. Jesus is still alive. His life his second life really because he is alive proves that he has paid for our sins through his death on the cross. Praise God for that. So be encouraged in your Christian walk. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He has made full atonement for your sin. And maybe today you are not right with the Lord. You have committed sin. Maybe you had a fight with your spouse today. Maybe things are not right. What do you do? 
Or maybe you realize, like Mary Magdalene, Jesus has been calling your name, and just now you realize it. You come back to the Lord, just like Mary did, and Jesus will receive you to himself. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, as it says in Romans 10, 13. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for this time you have given us. We ask a blessing, even right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And my friends, before I forget, I know that this is the time where I call upon our ushers to wait upon us for our morning tithes and offerings. If you would like to, to give an offering or a financial gift, you certainly can. Go to our website, www.com peacecw.org www.peacecw.org in the far upper right corner you will find a place where it says donate if you would like to do something online you can donate it through PayPal there is a little fee but I think 97-98% goes right to the church so feel free to do that if you would prefer to do it sending uh, a check or a, a love offering through the mail you certainly can our mailing address is 88 west waterloo canal winchester ohio 43110 88 waterloo west waterloo canal winchester ohio 43110 thank you <laughs>
And, oh Lord, we do think of Rosalie Pike. We think of others who have coronavirus. We ask that, indeed, you would provide healing to them, body, soul, and spirit. We think of uh, medical professionals, nurses, doctors, and others, God, who are on the front lines. We ask that you would help them. You would give them your strength, any healing, and safety as well. Jesus, we think of their families. We ask that you would protect them. You would bless them and you would keep them safe too. You would take any stress away. And they have needs that you would provide for them. And Lord, we think of needs that are, are right here that are represented. We ask that you would meet each one. We think of other needs of our church family. We lift you Jack, Art, Lois, Betty, Judy, Smitty, Mark, Christian, Jeannie, Debbie, Lucy, and Bill. There are others, Lord, who are in need of our prayer. We think of Spencer, Dan, Lisa, Andrew, Lou, Debbie, Eddie, and there are others as well. We lift them up to you, O oh Lord. We thank you for our missionaries and our mission organizations. We ask a special blessing on them. We ask that you would provide for the needs that they have, that you would keep them safe as well. We ask a blessing on Shiloh Free Lutheran Church in, oh God, we, uh, we think of them in Rapid City, South Dakota. We ask a blessing on Pastor Andy and Monica and their kids and the work that you are doing there. We ask a blessing also on Living Word Free Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We think of Pastor Thorson. We ask a blessing on him and his wife and their kids and that congregation. Lord, we ask a blessing on all your people, that you would keep us safe. Lord, as Americans, this is certainly a different Easter Sunday. But Lord, even though we're worshiping from our homes, we're staying at home, God, we that has not stopped you from rising from the dead. You are still alive. God, we do ask that you would give our our government, our ruling authorities, wisdom in handling this pandemic, please help them to make solid decisions, O oh God. Please be glorified in us too, for we ask all this in your holy and precious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And all dear friends, let's pray the prayer Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power of and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, dear friends, receive a benediction. Receive a blessing, really, from the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. He is risen.